All right, I will talk about the single particles in a box and the SUN connection. Let me first define the system. We have n sites and n distinct particles, meaning they can be labeled from numbers, for example, from 1 to, to n. All, part, all sites are occupied by a particle, and all sites are occupied by, by different particles. So uh, this state basically says that site 1 has particle 1, site 2 has particle, etc. The Hilbert space is n factorial dimensional and can be formally spanned by states of this sort, where each entry is a number between 1 and n, and all numbers are different. A natural uh, interaction to introduce to the system is the exchange interaction, which just exchanges the places of two particles. X12 exchanges the places of particles in site, sites 1 and 2. A general Hamiltonian can be written in this way, where it's just uh, sum over all possible uh, exchanges between all possible two sites. But of course, we'll deal with simple systems such as uh, the Eisenberg model, where just the nearest neighbors with constant inter uh, coupling constants. This is the one dimensional and the two dimensional. So the ground state of uh, these kinds of system uh, depends on. So the ground state of the system is uh, fully symmetric if t is negative and fully anti-symmetric if t is positive. This, uh, these are the examples for n equals 3. This is a symmetric state. This are uh, the anti-symmetric state. These states are the ground state of the system, and, and uh, they de it depends on the signature of t. Another interesting, interesting system to consider is the two-dimensional lattice with uh, signs that, uh, that are opposite in columns and rows. The ground state of this system wants to be symmetric in columns and anti-symmetric in rows. Uh, it's neither, and it's, uh, it turns out that if it's, it's neither, the ground state has to be degenerate. To solve this problem numerically, one has to diagonalize an n-factorial by n-factorial matrix, and it becomes impossible very fast. So we have to diagonalize small chunks of the hill space uh, at a time independently. To do so and to find the degeneracies, we'll uh, look at the symmetries in the problem. An obvious symmetry here is the permutation of particle labels. I can rename the particles and nothing measurable should change. So we are looking uh, at the symmetry group SN, uh, the symmetry group of permutations. And we are looking for its irreducible representations. The irreducible representations of a finite group correspond to the number of its conjugacy classes. The conjugacy, conjugacy classes of uh, the permutation group are its cycle structures. So here for the n equals 4 case, we have representatives of its cycle structures. These are the cycle structures, and these are Young diagrams. A Young diagram is a graphical representation of a cycle structure. Here we have 4, it corresponds to this one. Here we have 3, 1, this corresponds to this one, etc. All possible irreducible representations of, uh, of Sn are characterized by a Young diagram. It's a one-to-one -one correspondence. To find the dimension of uh, the corresponding irreducible representation, we'll use a Young tableau. A Young tableau is a filling of a Young diagram with numbers 1 through n in such a way that they increase in columns and in rows. And the amount of uh, Young tableaus for a given Young diagram is the dimension of the diagram. So here, for example, the dimension of this one is 1, the dimension of this one is 3, etc. Now let's look at the Hilbert space as a whole. Each base element can be identified with a certain permutation of a group. So when the, the symmetry group acts on the Hilbert space, it's as if it acts on itself uh, via matrices, uh, n factorial by n factorial matrices. So this is the regular presentation of the, group, uh, of the symmetry group Sn. And we know that uh, a regular presentation of a finite group decomposes into a direct sum of all of its possible irreducible representations where each one appears as a copy, the amount of time that equals to its dimension. So for the case n equals 4, this diagram will appear once, this diagram will appear three times, etc. Now notice that this diagram and this diagram correspond to the symmetric state and the anti-symmetric state. Generally, when we speak about diagrams, we need to, to think about symmetrizing in rows and anti-symmetrizing in columns. Another use for uh, Young tableaus is the following algorithm, Young orthogonal form. It uses the tableau of a given uh, diagram as an abstract basis for transpositions. In our case, the transpositions are just the exchange operators. So for this base and the operator x34, we can write it as a matrix. Uh, now, this algorithm is very useful because each entry here, uh, each row and each column, at most have two entries. So these matrices are very sparse, and it helps numerically. Also, this method gives us uh, a way to find the actual diagram that we are looking for in the irreducible representation. So results of the numerical solution. The ground state of the 2D lattice with opposite sign in rowing columns 
are, are squares. I could only do it for uh, up to 4x4 four four because it becomes impossible for 5x5 five five and I'm still trying to prove this uh, generally analytically. Another interesting result is the first excited states of the ferromagnetic case are diagrams of this sort. And I will show it analytically. Now let's allow uh, for amount for particles at different sites to be equal, similar. And uh, let's look at each site independently. We can say that uh, each site uh, is an n-dimensional complex vector space that transforms under the fundamental representation of SUN. Each base element corresponds to a possible particle, a possible flavor. A general vector can be written in this way, and under SUN transformations, it transforms it as a tensor. Now, if we, if we look at the cross product of n such uh, fundamental representations, a big n, n is the amount of sites, it's also a tensor, and it also transforms it as a tensor, but here we have the symmetry of permuting these indices with uh, actions of SUN. Permutation of indices commutes with actions of SUN. So again, we have this uh, permutation symmetry that dictates that the irreducible representations of SUN will correspond to Young diagrams. So for, uh, for n equals 2, for example, we have the anti-symmetric tensor, the symmetric tensor, but for the case n, equal, n equals 3, we have the same symmetric and anti-symmetric tensor that correspond to these diagrams, but we also have a tensor that has mixed symmetry that corresponds to this diagram. Now, to find the dimension of the corresponding irreducible representation of a diagram, of a tensor, we need to find the, the number of independent non-vanishing entries in these tensors. It turns out that it's also equal to the amount of semi-standard tableau of, the, of a diagram. The semi-standard tableau is a filling of a diagram with numbers in such a way that they can repeat, but they not decrease in, in rows and increase in columns. So uh, these are the semi-standard tableau for, for the special case, where uh, small n equals uh, big n equals 3. Now remember, big n is the amount of sites, and small n is the amount of possible flavors at each site. Now for the special case where they're both equal, we get that we can fill um, these uh, tableaus with numbers that are all different. Now each, out, each one of these tableaus correspond to a base element of the corresponding irreducible representation. So we get that we can get states that are with distinguishable particles uh, as, uh, as uh, they, they break a global SUN symmetry. Now these states are actually the states that we are looking in the original problem where all particles are different. So the solution of this original problem are states that break a global SUN symmetry for the special case where the amount of particles equals to the amount of sites. Now, if we take uh, the amount of flavors to be two, we actually get the regular spin chain models. We can just rename spin up and spin down, uh, one and, and two. And we know that the first excited states of the ferromagnet is spin waves. And I found out that these diagrams actually correspond to spin waves, where all spins are pointing the same direction except one, in a way. So uh, now if we allow more particles in the system, we can fill up this diagram with other particles, but this diagram and this diagram are in the same degenerate subspace, so they will correspond to the same energy. So we get uh, that the first excited states of, uh, of a ferromagnet, where all particles are different, actually in this are in the sum, same subspace as spin waves. So uh, that proves it analytically. Summary. Uh, as I said, for, uh, if the amount of particles equal to, to the amount of sites, we get uh, states that break a global SUN symmetry where, where all particles are different. Uh, because this system is very similar to spin chain models, uh, further studies can be done using methods from spin wave uh, models. And as you could see, uh, I used here less particles than I could. Uh, I used less particles than uh, they are because there are only two rows here. It's a general result because um, for any given uh, diagram, I can use like a minimal amount of particles that equals to the amount of, uh, of rows of that diagram. And that's all I wanted to say. Uh, any questions? It's the same dispersion as the spin wave. Yeah, they're just more uh, 
more possibilities for spins, for spin waves, because there are more par possibilities for particles, but it, they have the same energies. I am still working on it. I, I, I want to include it, but I, I, I'm not there yet. I'm still trying to prove, um, I'm working on the opposite sign model. I'm trying to prove that it's a square. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain again the matrix X34? X34 is... Um, why, why was it a, a, a sparse matrix? And how do I compute it? Uh, I, I just used an algorithm. Uh, it's because yeah, of the algorithm. Uh, well, this is the base. Yes. This, these tableaus. And the algorithm just uh, tells you how uh, the operator acts on these. So here, x34 uh, acts on this, you'll get uh, these vectors, etc. And then these are just bases, like an orthogonal base. But, but if I, I didn't explain the algorithm. So these numbers are. It's not, not obvious to me why, looking at these two lines, I get this matrix. But, uh, oh, because uh, just. Doing in the product of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 with x, 3, 4, and you'll get minus 1, 3, right here. They are the same entries on the right. You no, here is the different them. entry. These are, like, these are like two vectors. You act with this operator on this vector, and you get a superposition of two other vectors. But in no point did they exchange 3 and 4. No, you don't exchange. There is just an algorithm that tells you how it acts on, uh, on, these, on this basis. So not exchanging of three or four. No, not explicitly yeah. here. Just uh, okay. like to calculate these uh, these coefficients, uh, you, you take into consideration what you exchange inside these uh, uh, tableaus. Okay. 